Hello, my name is Kevin Pierce with Expo. Today, I'll be talking about downloading and reporting results from the OX1 into Fast Reporter 3. So a few things that need to happen. I need to make sure that I have the latest version of Fast Reporter 3. So if I go up into File, under Support, about Fast Reporter 3, I have the latest version. It has to be at least version 3.10 of Fast Reporter 3. Uh, it was released uh, December 2022. So I'm already logged into Fast Reporter 3. There's other videos uh, that talk about how to set up an exchange account that gives you Fast Reporter 3 for free. And that uh, account, the exchange basic account is a free account. Another thing that needs to happen is I need to make sure that my OX1 is also updated to the latest version as of December 2022. And so if I uh, look at my OX1 here, you will see um, if I hit the, the three uh, sandwich buttons there and I go down into settings and if I scroll all the way down, I want to make sure that my unit is fully updated. So I go here to about and then we can get our software version. So my software version is 2.0.1.22321.10. So that's the version that I need. Uh, but of course, you know, you need to make sure that your OX1 is on Wi-Fi um, and then your software is fully updated. I have a video that talks about how to take the OX1, connect it to Wi-Fi and update it as well. So those two things need to happen. So uh, and then one additional thing under the settings in the OX1. You'll see there's a new option now that is um, Wi-Fi data transfer to Fast Report 3. You want to make sure that is selected as well. So this is what I have selected here. Um, and so from that point, we can go ahead and connect. So my Fast Reporter 3 is on my laptop. My laptop is on the same Wi-Fi network or the same network as the OX1. So those are two things that need to happen that's very important. Within Fast Reporter 3, I'm going to go ahead and go to Instrument up here. I'm going to go to Synchronize over here on the left. And it's going to scan for any available devices. So if, if I have a FIP 500, if I have an OX1, uh, it will locate those devices. So here's my OX1. I will select it. And then it'll scan to see what jobs are available. And so I have a couple of jobs here that I have set up. And I have another video that talks about how to set up individual jobs. So let's say I just want to download this link map job that has 12 results. So this is 12 MPO test. I'm going to go ahead and hit download. Now you can download over Wi-Fi or you can also download over USB. Uh, I prefer the Wi-Fi method. It's much more uh, convenient and, it, and, it, and it's actually faster transfer speed within my network. So the results are successfully downloaded here, as you can see. And they're downloaded into Fast Reporter 3. They're not saved to your PC yet or your laptop. It's just on Fast Reporter 3. So now you see it goes to the optical fiber multimeter tab up here. So it's here under files, I have one job. If I go to measurement down here, I can see the individual measurements within that job. So here are my 12 tests that were performed on the OX1. I get some high level information here. Um, you see they're, they're sorted in nice order here, one through 12. Uh, so this is where I can start doing some processing. So let's say I wanna add some additional information down here, more than just fiber ID. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to highlight the link mapper, uh, you know, up here in the top right, the file name. I'll right click, go to auto documentation. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and add some additional information. I'm going to say, you know what? I want to add a cable ID. And I want to move the fiber ID actually over here. And so this is just the way that I do my workflow. You know, you don't have to do it this way. Go to location A. And then I got location B. So this is the way that I like to do it. So what that means is now my, my cable ID, my fiber ID is going to be in the wrong place. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the value here. I'm going to go down to fiber ID. I'm going to increment it. But I don't want to increment cable ID, so I uncheck it. And I want it to start at 0001. And then kind of work its way up into 0012. So it's going to be 1 through 12, right? So the first MPO, second MPO. Um, stuff like that. And then I want to put some information in here. So I, I want to say, you know what, this comes from Relay Rack 202 um, Shelf 
four, and then possibly uh, a panel information. You know, whatever makes the most sense. So that's what I've done here. And then, of course, on the other side, I would have the other relay rack. We'll see 1202, shelf one, panel four. And so that's what I have here. And this is how it's going to increment. It's going to go one through 12. So I just did basic identifiers here. So it's, it's going to increment my fiber ID. It's going to put the location A and B in each one of the different tests. Go and hit that. You'll see what it's done down here. I want to make sure and obviously, you know, populate all of this as well. So I'm pretty happy with what's here. But if I wasn't, I could change these. And I'm doing batch. So it's changing everything at once. If I want to add a comment in here, I can. You know, I'm going to say this, you know, a demo, video, reporting, whatever I want to do there. Hit OK. And then, of course, I can look at the summary here to see all the different uh, uh, wavelengths that were tested, the type of test that was done, you know, that type of information here. Um, and then, of course, we got our, our pass-fail indicators over here under the uh, optical fiber multimeter uh, uh, table here. So I'm pretty happy with all of this here. Now, if I wanted to save these to my computer, what I would do is I'd go ahead and rename them and save them. So with this job highlighted, I will just go to File, Save As, Save Selected File As. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to save it somewhere. I'm going to save it to my, uh, my downloads folder just so I can find it easily. Um, so that's what I'll do here. You can save it to your desktop. I mean, whatever makes the most sense for you. But I also want to rename them based on the file documentation, right? I want to make sure the file is save type. I can either do JSON or do OLX. And OLX is what I want if I want to pull it into here. And I want to go ahead and rename these. So you got identifier one through five. This is identifier one through five here. Uh, so, so essentially, uh, these four identifiers, these five identifiers here are these five identifiers here. And so this, this is how I want to name it. I want to name it uh, Fiber ID. I want to have location A in there. I want to have location B in there. And I want Fiber ID to be at the end. So I'll highlight it and move it down to. So now you see it's Fiber ID 3, 4, and then 2. And I like to add a, an underscore in there. So this is what the file name is going to look like. It's going to save it to my downloads. So I'll go ahead and hit Save. And it's, go ahead, and it's going to go ahead and save those. And then essentially what I'll do is I will go to my downloads folder. And you see them here? There they are. 1 through 12 here are all saved to my hard drive. So I can go ahead and archive these. Um, if I wanted to, I can pull them straight into Fast Reporter. So I can do reporting off of these or I can do reporting off the original job. Now, this original job, again, it's just sitting within Fast Reporter 3. It's not saved on your hard drive. So if I wanted to generate a report with this, I could just go to Report and Generate One. Or if I wanted to generate a report with these ones here, I would just highlight them. And I can generate a report. Or I can look at them individually here. So you can see all the different results here. Or within the original job, we can do it under Measurements. We can look at the individual results here. But in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and highlight these ones that I just saved. 1 through 12. I'll go to From New Template. And then under OFM folder here, I'll have different options. These tests are all link mappers. So I'm going to go ahead and do a link mapper test. I'm going to save it to downloads. I'm going to give it some sort of a name. I'll just leave the name alone. I have an option to save it as Excel or PDF. I like saving as uh, in both versions. So I'll do Excel first usually, and I will generate it. And then it'll open up that Excel file. You can take a look at it. And that's what we have here. So you can see we have all 12 of the tests here. That's the optical link mapper here, right? And again, there's, there's different tests that you can do. I go to new template. We can try the summary report. We'll give it a name. So you can kind of decide which report makes the most sense for your application. And then here's this one here. So we have one summary tab that gives us the high level information here. And then over here, we have the individual results. 
in a nice format. And of course, you can have this as a PDF, so it's just one big file as well. You can generate the PDF directly from Excel, or you can just do it from the actual uh, report itself. And that's pretty much it. That is uh, downloading your results off the OX1 and then doing a report within Fast Reporter 3. My name is Kevin Pierce with Expo. Thank you very much.